I'm Leah with the music blog yet and I'm here with Maximum Headdrum. How are you guys? We're drunk. <laughs> um, so what has the band been up to lately? We've been playing shows. We've been on tour of the IIS the past week now. It's been amazing opening up for them. Incredible, amazing new times because we're a new band. We haven't been on the road before. This is our first time, first experience for everyone. So this is something very exciting for us and I think for the public, you know, because they've never seen anything like it. They have no idea what to expect. So this is something that's beautiful that's happening with music and we're doing that. It's been a lot of fun. It's our last show from the tour and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, really quick, I'd just like to, I don't mean to interrupt the, the, the interview, but the, I think your blog needs to see the mustache of our uh, our keyboard tech. Oh, Tim, in. can you come, can you, Tim, can okay. you bring you in your, can you just show your mustache, please? Raleigh Fingers right mustache. Here, just, just he was actually right playing in Milwaukee uh, that's, a pitcher that's, from Classic Times. Come, come into the light. That's the type of Step into the lights kind of mustache. No, no, over here, over here, over here. Yeah. That's the kind of mustache it's, it's we've kind been of dealing sexy. with. Can you guys see and it? That kind of describes yeah, like where we want to go with our music. It's like sexy, <laughs> freaky, you know, freaky. The you know, like interview, bring out your inner freak. <laughs> you know, I think that's the most important thing. All right, well, Synthesize this is a really funky song. Who or what Thank inspired you. the track? Uh, actually, that's really weird because uh, I actually wrote that song uh, over the course of a year and a half, like in when I was sleeping, mm -hmm. and I'd wake up and I'd record it, and it was three different recordings from like it would be like 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. and I'd just be like mumbling into the uh, into the into my phone and recording it, and all the lyrics and like the riff and the melody they all came from that, and then the third time it happened that I dreamt that song. Like the next day, we uh, we recorded it. That's cool. Yeah, pretty cool. So being from LA, does that have an influence on like your sound? I think it has an influence anywhere that you're living. Your know, environment is always going to have an influence of what you're going to communicate. You know, especially in music. You know, your environment is such a central part of what's happening in your life. So day to day stuff it becomes a part of what you want to project or just be, naturally it does. I also think, you know, the record, I mean, it tends, it, I think it's a lot about isolation and the way, you know, technology isolates us. And I think LA is certainly a pretty isolated city as much as I love living, you know, I love living there. It's it's a pretty isolated place. Everyone lives in kind of own little micro globule. And uh, I think there's certainly that feeling as part of the record. So on this tour, what's your favorite song to play? I like PhD. You know, it's like I can feel the the crowd really uh, identifying with it, especially women. You know, because there are a lot of more powerful women. You know, as, especially in America. I haven't lived in a, the U.S. for a really long time, and uh, I felt that there's a stronger strength with women and their sexuality being more secure with it and uh, able to express that. You know, it's like why not? Um, I think with this song, it, it, that was the idea that we wanted to write with this song, you know, we were thinking about the lyrics of it, we were like, you know, not the typical song where there's a, a guy like, yeah, I know what I want, I know what, I, I know what I'm going to get, you know, it's like a woman that knows, because usually the woman is dictating what they, what's going to really happen, <laughs> you know, in most cases, in all reality, you know, I, um, that's pretty much how it is, you know. Um, so, so you got like a little feminist vibe going on almost. Yeah, but in a very <laughs> extreme way, you know. It's yeah. like, it's like, why not? You know, there's guys that are just like, yeah, I'm gonna be a pimp. I'm gonna be like controlling this and that. But there's women that are much more knowledgeable in their headset, where it's just like, hey, you know, I know what I want. I know how, how I can get that. Yeah. You know, and and they're good at it. <laughs> you know, it's like, why not? You know, uh, be um, secure in that. You know, and that's great to be secure in your personality and especially in your sexuality. You know, that makes for somebody that, hey, I, 
I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really impressed when there is somebody that's very open and very secure in their sexuality. Right? I think it's very cool to see. You know, I don't think there should be any shame in that. Sorry, did you have anything to add? Or? <laughs> uh, your favorite song to play? My favorite song is probably Hugs. I love okay. doing Hugs just because we get to... Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm hurting. <laughs> um, hugs is great because we get everybody to, to hug each other in the crowd. And, um, and that's always really fun. Tonight's show is special. We, uh, David Cho. We ran into David Cho at the uh, Canadian border and he was shooting a film. And so we had him come and be a hug ambassador, uh, him and his buddy. Yeah. And uh, and and they went out into the crowd and hugged everybody, we, you know. And then at the end of the song, we just get everybody to hug each other, and that's really fun. People love that. People yeah, love especially if people are hating on hugs, you know. But you know, it's such a natural thing. Like babies need hugs. Well, I mean, like talking about that, um, we were talking to somebody else earlier about how, like, when you were in Milwaukee and you did the little vegetarian shout out, and people got like really angry, right? Or like, they got, did you know? Whereas, little, like, in Toronto, like, it was cool. Um, so, can you talk about like that a little bit, maybe? Definitely. I think people that don't understand like the whole lifestyle of vegetarianism. I don't know. We just wanted to show like our love for you know alternative lifestyles, you know, because now things have changed. You know, you're not hunting. Nobody's hunting and killing their own animal for yeah. prey, so you can have a different lifestyle. You can eat like, for me, I'm a vegetarian. That's fine for me. But I think people can don't have to eat meat every day of the week. You know, they can choose or whatever. But it's just like praising, you know, these other alternative food sources that exist because we're more knowledgeable and we know that, you know, in the society that we live in, you can have these options. You know, which is a great thing. So you don't have to over-process stuff, which is just like it's being pushed to people constantly. But um, I think people who don't know anything about that, it, they understand that we're praising Satan, you know, which is the god of the underworld, but it's not actually what we're yeah, praising. Satan is actually a wheat product that is... Uh, <laughs> a wheat stuff. Well, to explain, we have a song... We do a song called uh, Praise Satan. Right. It's, it's, it started off as Praise Satan, <laughs> but people understood it as Praise Satan. And then uh, and then there were clever people that caught on that were vegetarians. Yeah. So like, this is Satan. That's pretty clever. But it's okay if they don't understand. But it's great because you can look it up. You know, they can talk to friends and it spreads somewhere like, wow, there's something that exists that, oh, okay, that's funny. Any other like funny moments that's happened to you um, on your tour so far? I mean, it's pretty much just constantly cracking up. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we have were a lot playing of bingo and forty-five. <laughs> forty-five. Our car, our van broke down in Blaine, Minnesota, and these dudes ended up uh, playing bingo at some random <laughs> bar. Bar. And Blaine. Local pub. And they, we were playing bingo, and there was one woman that had this lucky number 45 and anytime the number 45 was mentioned she would just randomly yell it out 45 and then just go back into regular playing and so we I don't know it was kind of funny and bizarre it became a motif on the tour 45 there's a lot of a lot of that but so, she was, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, no, no. If you were to make like a movie about your band, um, or based on your band, or a documentary, I guess, what would it be called? God, it would be over the top. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a Sly Solo movie, but I want to <laughs> steal it, though. Over the top, 2040. <laughs> like a futuristic sci-fi movie of like action and sex. You know, kind of like a over-the-top Blade Runner, like right. an X-rated Blade Runner. <laughs> X-rated okay. Blade Runner. Yeah, I like that's it. how it would be. You know, kind of like that. Right. With Barry White as a robot. Well, we love the checkered suits. That was like a really unique touch. Even like the nails and stuff that we noticed. Yeah, Hi. those are awesome. And the shoes and everything. Did. Hello. <laughs> yes. um, so how important is image to your live performances and to like your brand as a band? I think it's like the first impression, so it sticks yeah. out, you know. Like we want people to never forget our show. Right. Even if they don't like it. I love that, you know. Even people are like trying to understand it, they're never going to forget it. That's the most important thing. People need that shock, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like music is about... Oh, even the sunglasses. I didn't notice that checkered too. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
detail, you know. Yeah. It's like I think it's important, you know, to, to have that communication, uh, especially when you're doing art, to keep mm -hmm. people on their toes. At the same time, do something that you feel very natural doing. We're not trying to like push the envelope, but it was just an idea that Sam thought of before, you know, that kind of like set pretty well, you know, like, let's have these suits, and, like get the design, you know, and it just kind of flowed with the moment of everything. Now, it really wasn't uh, planned so like strategically to shock people, but it, it does shock people in a natural way because we have a personality that's projected from these suits. Sometimes we wear them, sometimes we don't, you know, but I felt that we needed to wear them, you know, for this show in particular. First time, you know, impressions, but... You know, it's like the black and white thing. It's like a great thing of like yin and the yang, the negative and the positive. You know, we have our songs are kind of like that, very diverse. You know, yeah. from super extreme to very mellow. But you there's know. a nice balance to it too, at the same time. I feel that way too. You brought that up before, and I was like, wow, that's so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, what bands or artists have you been listening to lately, or have been like, inspirational in your music? Uh, I'd say like two, I went to two big, it wasn't so much, uh, <laughs> sorry, Tim, Tim is fucking with the mustache, you gotta stop. Really the mustache one. I went to two shows that were really important to me as far as I think making the record, uh, one of which was Prince, he played about, he played like something like 30 shows in LA at the Forum, uh, and it was just fucking mind blowing, he's such an amazing performer. And he's, his songwriting is really amazing, and uh, he's just a great performer, and he's sexy. And then I, and then later on, I saw R. Kelly play, oh, okay. uh, and I was, it was like I was like, whoa, like I want to make music that people fuck to. Like I never have made any music. I want to make some baby making that. shit, yeah. and I never did that before yeah, ever in my life. And uh, and that was like really, I think, definitely inspirational as far as the record, like, and, and the direction of the record. Do you have a favorite re uh, release of the year so far? Like an album that's been put out this year? This year? Uh, I really love this, I'm not sure if it was this year or not, but I love uh, these kids, Ollie, uh, or Oliver, sorry. Um, they're really dope. They're uh, this, this like disco group from LA that I'm really into. Mm -hmm. uh, what else have I been I love the ASAP Rocky record, like probably last year, maybe. Uh, the records I've ever listened to. What about you, D? I only heard like the Queens of the Stone Age. It's like it's pretty cool. Like it, it grew on me. You know, at first mm -hmm. I heard it, I was like, wow, it wasn't what I was expecting. But it was cool to hear it now, and I really it started to grow on me a lot. You know, and I really like it. Oh yeah, also probably the Yeah Yeah Yeahs record. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little biased because yeah, yeah. I worked on it, but uh, I love that record. It's so awesome. Okay, and for our last question, what's something about the band that nobody yet knows? Some secret about you guys? Uh, shit. <laughs> um, a secret that nobody knows. We have a song about space debris. <laughs> okay. That's not a very good secret, though. <laughs> nobody knows it. You know anything about space debris? No. Space trash? <laughs> no. Creamy wipes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of space. There's a lot of stuff uh, floating around the Earth, planet Earth, just <laughs> discarded satellites. But I feel like we need to make up a better secret that's like we're revealing. Yeah, I think we're it's pretty revealing. I mean, we have. Ah, damn it! <laughs> Fruit flies. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's not really a secret, but it, it's, I don't think we're trying to withhold it from the group. A secret is something that we're trying to block from. I got it. Okay. We're actually a part of a uh, Illuminati <laughs> oh secret, secret society. I can't talk about this. Uh, that uh, runs like all the, basically all the world money, money and currency manipulation. And... Uh, there's a lot of hidden messages in the album okay. that kind of reflect to our uh, Illuminati right. Masonic uh, tendencies. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys again so much for doing an awesome interview. Um, 
Yeah, thanks. It's been fun. Awesome, Brad. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Hi. Hi. Arigato. Arigato. This guy. Beautiful.